Secretary of State William H. Seward often seemed to dominate the cabinet. He expected to be president himself, and it took him a while to accept that Lincoln, not he, was in charge. Seward certainly cut a figure in Washington. He did not conform to the prevailing simple styles of the day. Goodwin paints a fairly accurate word picture in her book. Seward preferred pantaloons and a long-tailed frock coat, the tip of a handkerchief poking out the back pocket. This jaunty touch figured in his oratorical style, which included dramatic pauses for him to dip into his snuff box and blow his enormous nose into the outsized yellow silk handkerchief that matched his yellow pantaloons. But Lincoln knew how to keep his flashy subordinate in check. For instance, there was a time that Seward came upon the president polishing his boots. Aghast, Seward declared, we do not blacken our own boots. Indeed, replied Lincoln. Then whose boots do you blacken, Mr. Secretary? This man, Seward, would become Lincoln's most trusted confidant and friend in the cabinet. He was savagely attacked at the same time as the president was assassinated. And while he was recuperating, no one dared tell him of the president's death. Several days later, Seward was gazing out his bedroom window and he saw the flag flying at half-mast at the War Department. He pondered for a moment, then exclaimed, the president is dead. If he had been alive, he would have been the first one to come see me. But he has not been here, and he has not sent word to see how I am. He sat in silence for many minutes, tears coursing down his cheeks. <laughs>